guys, we're here at the Aston Martin showroom in Singapore for a very special treat. Mr. Merrick Reichman from the UK is here and he's going to give us a masterclass on design and innovation. Now, he is the chief creative officer as well as the executive vice president. So we'll go catch up with him later. But first, enjoy the cars. Hi Merrick, thanks so much for sitting down with us again. Now we only have six relatively simple questions, two of which yep. we've asked earlier. First up, yep. inspiration and creativity. What gets you going in the mornings? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I think inspiration and creativity, I have to say everything inspires me. You know, what, what does that mean? It means that I, I can find inspiration in anything, but I therefore have to look, see, feel, touch, taste, travel, people, uh, food, culture, everything is a form of inspiration because every single day that you counteract or you come into contact with what you normally have is something different. So I, I, I think inspiration is, is looking outward from yourself personally. And I, I think as long as you do that, you can be inspired. Then you can seek the inspiration. You can go and see or hear or look for something where you feel like you're not being inspired. So I can go see a great movie, uh, some dance, some music somewhere, to an art exhibition, see an amazing building. But I think the most important thing about creativity is seeking. You have to look and you have to have open eyes. And if you have an open mind and eyes, there is so much in the world to inspire. So much, so much so that you can't take it all in. So an open mind. Awesome, thank you. Now let's move on a little to the cars, the DBX specifically. Everyone is talking about it. Everyone's anticipating its official unveiling. You guys are releasing details bit by bit. Are there any top secret details you can share with us on the DBX project? I mean, I'll, I'll share something about the DBX. So our, our SUV, we launch in the next few weeks, really, uh, multiples of weeks, a couple of months, we'll, we'll show the car to the world for the first time. We've started to hint and show grill forms, etc., etc. We'll release more and more information. Um, I guess one of the things that would be a first release is that I don't think we've officially said that this is our bonded aluminium structure and platform. So this is our platform. And, and our platform means that I have the freedom to place every millimeter where I want it which means I'm not constrained by an existing platform, by an existing factory. Let's not forget, we built the factory to manufacture this car. We assemble and build the chassis that goes into this car, which means every millimeter of that chassis, that platform, is that architecture is designed and developed by Aston Martin Design and Aston Martin R&D. So every millimeter is precision to look, feel, and dynamic. So it will be, and I can guarantee this, the world's best looking SUV because it doesn't follow another platform and the constraints of another platform. Right. Every millimeter is where the design team wants the millimeter to be and the dynamics team wants it to be from a dynamic driving perspective. Right. So first snippet, world's best looking SUV. <laughs> well, of course. Well, you've spent a lot of years in Range Rover and if memory serves me, about 15 with Aston Martin. But there have yeah. been no SUV models available. Well, maybe there were some top secret projects five, to 10 years back, but as far as the public knows, as far as we know, none. So how hard was it for you to switch over from designing iconic and beautiful yeah. two-door sports cars that yeah. screams performance yeah. and sex appeal to an SUV that needs to fulfill the same tasks? So if, if I start with it, with the SUV, and, and if you take away the fact that sports cars exist, and you're a, you're a new customer into the world that has understood that there are now SUVs in the world. If I said to you, DBX drives like a Vantage, 
and stops like a DBS Superleggera. It's a sports car. It's not compromised in its driving capability just because it has to carry four stroke five people comfortably. It's a four door car with a, with a hatch, so a five door effectively, four seat plus a middle seat in the rear, so five, five occupants. But it, it's not constrained by its dynamics because we individually design every component to suit the car. We're designing the car for performance because it's an Aston Martin. We're not taking a platform and saying, now turn it into this. It is our future sports car in many ways, and it will drive and it does drive and give you the feeling that you get an advantage. And don't forget, you've got four wheels gripping this time. You've got active ride control systems that keep the car balanced and flat and mean that it can it means it can drive through corners in the way that a sports car drives through them. You have three-way air suspension system that allows it to, to move and articulate as it needs to on track, on road, and then when you change those settings, a relative amount of off-road capability as well. So it's, it's a sports car with all the practicalities that you need. And the whole reason that we can do it is the beginning of SUV is sports, and the utility is more use, and it's a vehicle, as these are vehicles behind me. In my background, I've worked for many years on traditional SUVs as well, through the Land Rovers, through the Range Rovers and development. And I spent 10 years in the US, which again, it's an SUV market. So visually, I kind of understand the, the, the masses of an SUV and what would make them both sporting and sexy versus utilitarian. So this is the world's most sporting, most sexy SUV. Is this the hardest project you've done with Aston Martin? It's, it's been the most exciting project. I mean, it's, it's never, you know, I'm a designer at the end of the day. So hard, hard is relative because I want to solve the problem. I want to find a solution to something. More challenging, yes, but problem, no. And, and I want the problems because I'm, I want to solve the problems. If I don't have a problem to solve, I don't have a job because I'm a designer. Got it. Thank you. Now, we know you're not supposed to have favorites, but let's be frank, we're all human after all. We've got emotions. Till date, yeah. even if it's not something you have designed, your favorite Aston Martin and why? <sighs> to date, my favorite Aston Martin. Um, I'm not going to pick one I've designed because that would be easy, but I think if I look back at our cars and I would have to say DBR1 is the most amazing Aston Martin ever. It, it was designed and created at a, at, in a time of austerity. So the, the car was produced um, and manufactured with the knowledge um, from Spitfires in, in many respects, the, the materials that were used, the way the car was designed. It's a car that nobody said, please make this look beautiful, simple, elegant, pure, muscular. It just happened to be that way. And it's just a magical piece of design. And every time I see the car, it evokes the emotion of its win in 59. So I have to say DBL1. Got it, understood. Now you're an academic as well. Any words of advice or tips for aspiring students? or uh, creative people in general who will like to follow in your footsteps? Because you've come such a long way to build a name and a brand for yourself and the company. Yeah, I guess if I was encouraging or mentoring a, a young creative or someone who wants to become or change, become a creative, move, move professions, it's about having imagination. So we can have all the knowledge in the world, but you have to apply the knowledge. So you need to think, you need to question what you're doing, question the answers you have, never accept the first answer, maybe get to the seventh answer and then look back and think, well, the first one was the best, but unless you do the other six, you don't know. So never accept the first answer, be tenacious, have a why, why have you done it? What's it changed? What does it mean? And if you believe in that, then you convince the team that it's the right thing to do because that's the other aspect of creativity and design you're part of a team. So you have to have the conviction behind your design. You have to therefore be tenacious and find the answers, find the solutions, solve the problems, and then convince the team, which means you have to believe in your idea above anything else. And to get ideas, look, see, read, 
photograph, go see it all, go enjoy the world and you will be inspired. Alrighty, last question. Something we discussed earlier, but I have to ask you again. Now, back in 2014, when I first met you, we talked about the comparison between computer designs. I mean, back then, virtual reality um, isn't as big as it is now versus hand sketches. Now, the key word I took away from that conversation yeah. back then was tactile. That was the one key word you mentioned and elaborated on. Yeah. Has that changed in your heart, yeah. in, your, in your soul? Has that yeah. changed? Yeah. No, tactile, touch, feel, the, the, what your brain discovers from touch is unbelievable. You, you can read form if you don't look through touch. You could actually draw what you are touching. Your, you, our brains are so clever at, at, at interpreting what our fingers touch and feel that I believe it's the most important part of designing that you have that tactile process. Now you might be able to get to 95% of the design through VR, through, through CAD systems, but the 5% is what will make the difference. The 5% adds the magic. And I believe that's where you need the touch. You need the visual representation directly in front of you. I would pose the question, if you see a beautiful object, what do you want to do with it? Wow. You want to touch it. Okay. Sorry, my mind's got a side <laughs> you, you thought I was going to say a beautiful woman, <laughs> and it's exactly the same. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all the questions we have. Great. Uh, hope to see you again in yeah, yeah. You'll, we'll see you in October. Thank yeah, you very great much. to see you again.